Okay, so let's have a look at uh, a method uh, called an identity-based encryption. So with this method we'll find it simplifies the the generation of encryption keys. Okay, so let's start and we'll look at our existing method that we use, typically known as PKI or public key infrastructure. So what we have is we have two keys. So let's say that uh, our secret key is, a, is the red key here and the key that we can distribute is the is the public key. Okay, so that's the public key here. So we contact Trent and we he gives us a key pair. We then distribute the public key to whoever wants to be able to send us uh, some encrypted messages. Okay, so the same on the other side. So there's Alice's private key and her public key is there. So if uh, Bob wants to communicate with Alice, so Alice will send her public key to Bob and that's signed by, by Trent. So as long as Bob uh, trusts Trent, then he knows that the key that he's been sent uh, identifies Alice properly. So he takes the message. He also takes a hash of the message and, uh, and encrypts that with his private key. That's known as signing the message and it will prove his identity. So uh, we'll take Alice's public key and we'll encrypt the message. We send it over and then she will then decrypt with her private key. Okay. And it's a digital certificate that gets sent over between Alice and Bob to be able to allow Bob to be able to, to encrypt the, the, the message to Alice. The other little thing that we have in there is that uh, Bob signs with his pro with his private key, takes a hash of the message, and then encrypts the hash with his private key. If he then sends over his digital certificate, then Alice will be able to look at the message. She'll be able to hash the message too. She will then decrypt Bob's uh, little encrypted hash, and she'll check to see if they they're the same. If they are. That is proven uh, Bob. Okay, so it's quite a complicated, complex <laughs> system that's been developed, but that's PKI and it really relies on these key pairs and also for the, uh, the, the creation of the digital certificates. So let's look at identity based encryption. And with identity based encryption, what we have is that uh, we have some form of identity. So it might be the email address of uh, Bob. So if Bob's called Bob at home. And then we use, we create a trust domain, and then we have a trusted private key uh, server, a TPG. With this, we have some shared parameters between Bob and Alice, and these might be short-term parameters that we could use, or they could be long-term ones. So Alice doesn't actually have to know Bob's encryption key. What she'll do is that she'll use something about his identity that will allow us to be able to uh, create a unique encryption key for Bob uh, based, based on, on the ship parameters. Okay. okay, so then what we have is that uh, we'll take Bob at home as his identity. We then uh, do a calculation and we'll end up with Bob's public key. We'll send it over to Bob and then Bob will actually give his, his uh, his identity to uh, our TPG and that that TPK and then that will generate his private key that's actually used for the message and be able to decrypt it. In this way uh, Alice can send uh, encrypted messages to Bob even though the Bob doesn't actually have uh, uh, an encryption key. So what we end up with is uh, an encryption key. Just like a public key in RSA, we end up with an N or a modulus value. So that's an E and an N for our encryption key, and a D and an N for our decryption key. Then we take the message, where is it to the power of the encryption key, and we take mod N, just like we do with RSA. And then on the other side, we take the cipher, where is it to the power of D, take mod N, and we get our result back again. Okay, so the specialness in IBE is really around 
the generation of the, the encryption keys, the D and the E value. So let's look at the code and we'll look at an example to, to see how it all works. Okay, so, so we have the code uh, in here. So in this case we've got our, our two IDs and our message. And then what we're going to do is we're going to generate our our new uh, our new keys based on that. So Alice contacts the the uh, PGK, and uh, then uh, she'll be able to get the public key of uh, Bob. She'll be able to generate the public key of Bob because there are certain shared parameters. After that, uh, what happens is that uh, when Bob receives the encrypted message, then he'll contact the the trust server, and then the trust server will generate a private key based on that. So the generation of the private key is uh, here. We go here. That's the generation of the private key here, and this is just what we have with RSA. We take M and we we take it we convert it to a big integer. So we've got to convert it into a byte array first. Once it's in a byte array, we then uh, raise that, we take the mod of the public key, and then we, we take the power of the public key and then mod m. And then to decrypt it, we take the cipher to the power of the private key and mod n there too. Okay, so here's an example here. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll use Fred at home. Um, we'll send that to Eve. And uh, good or bad. Okay, so now Fred is going to send to Eve, and this is the message here. Okay, so there we go. So it's sent through the, the message. So we can see here, then we have, uh, there's the recipient and then the sender. This is the public key that's been generated. So then uh, Fred at home will actually take the message and raise it to the power of that value, and then take the mod of n. So this is what we get. These are these are bytes that we see here. And then the other side, uh, Eve, well, actually, then take the she she will generate the private key that's required, and you see the private key is always bigger than the public key, and then we get the result back here. Okay, so that's demonstrated uh, how we can use IBE. The code is on this page here if you want to have a look at it.